But first, let's go back before the drama to the night before we left. go any quicker. <laughs> I feel like I'm not really moving. It's because we're leaving at 7 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Problem with the engine. Not a good start. Things crossed. Oh my god. <laughs> Just went for an amazing swim. Basta. Dabba. Is it cold? Ooh. The following morning we left nice and early to travel to our next destination of Gardevelle. We didn't want to travel too far as we wanted to take it all in today. We looked around the area for other anchorages but settled on Gardevelle. So the next journey was a big one. We planned to anchor just before the Messina Straits, but as Italy had an extreme heat wave, there were fires everywhere, and unfortunately there was one right where we planned to stay. We went through the straits in the middle of the night, which is not advised. Like, yeah, 15 knots, we'll be flying. Mm. 15 knots of wind being pushed us, pushing us out, we can use that. With the, with the storm, storm jib. And then we're getting pushed back in. We're only like five knots there. So we're having to go through the straits because the marine is closed because of the fire. Um, it's about 12 to 13 knots going through the straits at the moment. We're not going all the way through. We're some of the first anchorage. But, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, an insane situation. We got just there, and there's no anchorages for like four, or five hours, six hours. So we don't really have a choice. The two-hour one is just down here. So we've got to go into the 
The reason the Messina Straits can be so dangerous is because you have cargo ships everywhere that can't see you. You have rocks near the edges, so you have to stay further in. Now we had to add the factor in of night time, so the cargo ships definitely couldn't see us, and we couldn't see the rocks near the edges, so we had to stay further in the middle where the cargo ships were. It was just an absolute mess, given the fact that we could only see 20 feet ahead of us. And obviously, you've got the Kraken in there. We finally made it through the crossing and got to our next anchor point. It wasn't a very good one, so we were searching for an okay spot just to get a couple of hours of sleep. gauge is broken so we can't check and we have this kind of tube and now we're yeah 30 nautical miles from where we need to be we have diesel thank the lord we have two jerry tankers two jerry cans of it that didn't smell good huh? that didn't smell good And our engine didn't work. Mm. This is good. And we're what, like four hours away from Sorrento? Yeah, four hours away. But as we are right now, it'd be like 15, 20 hours. Mm. No wind. No. No phone signal. No. No water. No, no anything. <laughs> pan, 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 pan. pan. Hello all stations, hello all stations, hello all stations. This is Vessel Morgana. 
This is Vessel Morgana. This is Vessel Morgana. Morgana, Morgana, this is Go ahead, please. What's the problem? We have no electricity and because um, the old turnover has broken. Uh, run out of fuel, run out of water. Yeah, the water bags, power. basically when we're moving around, must have split. And they, all the water from those little bags, we had about 30, 40 litres that went to the bilge. And we just sat here, I'm a bit thirsty. You have number? We call? Grazie. Do you have any more agua? Any more? No. Oh, okay. Well, the Coast Guard's here and they've given us our emergency water. <laughs> and I'm glad they've come, but they, that's the water they've given us for 15 hours. Yeah, that should do it. Do you follow our reason? Come on. <laughs> Oh, by the way, <laughs> someone else has drunk this. <laughs> yeah, we got that tiny little pack wherever that's gone. It's probably slipped off the side. I, yeah, we got chucked two bottles of water again. Personal we're, bottles. We're very thankful they came out. It's just funny either way. Like, literally, a dribble, and it's. I can smell that. I can smell. <laughs> I've ever drunk that. <laughs> So the Coast Guard's kind of just left. They literally just drove off, didn't wave, they've just left. But I think they've pulled up at the sailboat to ask for a spare battery. We hope. We're literally just fresh. there. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, they've just given up with us and just drove off. <laughs> I mean, I got the battery out. I got the battery out. Like... For anyone <laughs> who doesn't believe we didn't run out of water, here you can see we were drinking almond milk, orange juice, another orange juice, lemon and lime juice. Lemon and lime juice. We were living off of them for like a day. I was, I was willing to sacrifice the battery to them. Yeah, they didn't even look at us when they drove. Oh no, they are stopping. They are. Okay. Basically, we've got to prove to the Coast Guard that the boat doesn't move. There's no wind. No, what are we doing? 0 0.7. Well, that's, that's actually, the, that's the peak. <laughs> got a massive team of Coast Guards behind Yeah, they're just, and they, they said that, I mean, it's very, not, it's very good of them. They said they were going to wait. 15 hours. <laughs> wait to see us get back to shore. Yeah, 15 hours, I don't think so. From where the Coast Guards left us, it was about 30 nautical miles from Positano. Obviously we took a straight route, which is why we're so far out, but where we broke down was just about here. Now that night was the hard part. We moved at one nautical mile, and once we got there, we had the current taking us west, which was the issue. We had to get to Positano before we got dragged out. So what I had to do was get the dinghy off and start paddling the boat to Positano. And this was about, <laughs> by this point, it was about three nautical miles. God, we look so crazy. Yeah. We're now being towed. Oh my God. What are we doing? That's the second time we've had to call the Coast Guard. She thought it was fixed, but... Oh my god. Yeah. Did that subscribe? Subscribe!